I thought it would be fun to make another cookie jar for the dollhouse. This time we're going to go in a stone cottage kind of vibe here. Stay tuned and see how fun and easy this is to do. Alright, just like our cookie jar last week, we are starting with a paper base, a cardstock base. And I have cut a strip of paper, it's about 4 inches by 3 fourths of an inch. And as my form this time, because I want kind of a square or rectangular shaped cookie jar, I am using one of the tumbling tower blocks from Dollar Tree. They're about 3 eighths of an inch by 5 eighths of an inch. You can use whatever you've got that's approximately that size. I'm going to wrap my paper around my block. And I do want, now I started at a corner and I want the end to wrap around, which means you may need to go a little more or a little less than, a, than the 4 inches. And just trim your end so that it ends on a flat side, not at a corner. It'll just be easier to make sure it's tight that way. And I'm going to go back here and I'm going to make a pencil line like we do sometimes. The pencil line will let me know where I can put my glue. I don't want glue so that it attaches to my wood form. I, and I don't want glue showing on the inside. Now I'm comfortable using glue on this because I know that glue will soak into the paper unlike it would on our wooden tray last yesterday in yesterday's video. Uh, if you didn't see that be sure and go check the channel for that. Um, but today I know that the glue soaks into the paper as it dries so it won't come unglued like it would have from the wooden tray. So now I am going to roll this up and I'm keeping this as tight as I can without tearing the paper and as straight as I can. And I need this glue to dry so that I can add my first layer of clay to it. So once this is dry, oh, and let's take it off of here so it doesn't accidentally adhere to my block. Let's let this dry, and when it is, I'll come back and we will cover it with some clay. All right, for our first layer of clay, I'm just using some original Sculpey this week because I don't, it's really not going to show except at the very bottom of our cookie jar. So I'm not too worried about it not being the more porcelain ceramic looking clay. And I've got gunk all over my clay roller. Great. All right. So let's cut a straight line here, and we are going to need some more clay here in just a second. And I'm going to cut this. And this layer doesn't even need to be all that neat. It just needs to be attached nice and tight. putting some TLS, translucent liquid Sculpey, which we'll be using throughout the project. And this is going to get baked multiple times today. It's another one of those where we're going to be going in and out of the oven. And we're going to set this on to here. Make the bottom. Like I said, this doesn't have to be perfectly neat because it's really, there's going to be multiple layers over this today. It will show on the very bottom and it will show on the bottom at the bay, at the inside and it might show a tiny bit at the rim on the top but that's about it it's okay if you have seams because those are all going to be covered up 
Now the other piece we do need to get right now, so I'm going to get lay out some clay and well, kind of a thick piece. I'll show you how thick this is after I get it cut. And then I'm going to push down with my tower, tumbling tower block because I know that if it's cut this size, it will fit inside. And this is going to be that little part that sticks down from our lid that will allow our lid to stay on our cookie jar easier. It'll give it that extra bit of security. So now it's about that thick. So I'm going to bake both of those pieces about 10 minutes at 250 degrees. And when they are baked and cooled, I'll come back and we'll go to the next step. All right, these are baked and they're actually just fresh out of the oven because I want to show you what I do when they first come out. Now I've got a piece of that white clay that's a little taller than I want. While it's hot from the oven, it's much easier to trim it. Okay, that's a little bit too big. So I'm going to trim just a tiny sliver off. It's already starting to cool. It's not nearly as soft as it was when I did the first piece. And now it fits in really nicely. So this piece I'm putting off to the side. We aren't going to deal with that one again until we are ready to do the roof. So this is our little house. And we're going to add a door and we're going to add some windows. And to do that, I have some red clay and I have some blue clay. Now, I don't even know what brand this is. It looks like it's kind of a blue pearl. I've had it in my clay collection for absolutely forever. It's one of the first clays I ever bought. Um, and it's still good. Uh, it's, I don't know what it is though. And I'm sure it's not out there anymore. But I like this. I want to use this for the windows. And you could use any light blue if you even want to put on the details. Now I'm only putting details on the front of my little house. I'm not going to put details on the back or the sides. You can if you want. That's up to you. It's your little, it's your little world. So I'm going to this, and I want this a little thinner. It's still a little thicker than I want now that I look at it. There. That's, now it's too, now I broke it. It really doesn't take a lot of clay to make these pieces. A little cornstarch here, that will help the situation a little bit. There. Now I can cut a very skinny little door. And I'm trying to not get my head in front of the camera, okay? Not sure how successful I will be at that, but you know, we'll see. All right, now we're going to put our door right here at the base on the front, right in the center. And I'm going to it's up. And I'm going to put it right there. And I'm just, I'm going to, I'm going to trim that part off when it comes out of the oven. It'll just be a lot easier. So I'm going to put a little bit of TLS up here and a little bit up here. Because I want, now these are really thin pieces. We don't want to add a lot of bulk. I'm going to probably cut that in half, in fact, is probably all I need. And don't worry about getting these placed perfectly because we're going to put our stones over the edge of them. In fact, you could run the whole piece of blue all the way across the front if you wanted to. It looks like eyes with a tongue sticking out right now for some reason. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to bake that probably only about five minutes. It doesn't need to be baked for very long because that's very thin clay and very thin amount of TLS. So when that's baked I'll come and cooled a bit, I'll come back 
and we will start adding our stones. While I've got the while this is baking though, I am going to start mixing some clay. I have some hazelnut by um, Sculpey. I have some elephant gray by Sculpey. I have a little bit of black on my table and I have my white. So I'm going to mix some of the um, original Sculpey with this hazelnut. I'm going to use it both as it is and mixed with white. The elephant gray I'm going to use as is and also mix some with the original Sculpey and some with the black and I am going to make then here's some I've already mixed. This is this with some of the original Sculpey in it. Um, I'm going to cut little pieces, roll it into snakes, cut little pieces, and roll a whole bunch of little round balls of clay. Those will be our stonework that is going to cover our little cottage. So when that's done and my cookie jar is baked, I'll be back and we will start putting those stones on. All right, so this is out of the oven and it is cooled off. As soon as it came out, I did trim the bottom of that that was sticking off. And I've made quite a few little balls of clay, which will be our stones. I have some TLS on my tray off to the side and a toothpick. You're going to start by going around our door. And I'm going to put some TLS all the way around the door. I have a lot more control this way than if I try to use the tip of the TLS bottle. Now, where did I very carefully put my tools? <laughs> I'm going to try and leave that laying there so that hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing and hopefully I won't stick my head in the way. So the first row of stones, I'm trying to alternate the colors of the stones I'm using. I don't want to get all one color together. I want to kind of have some variety. And when they start sticking to me and not staying where I want them, I will go ahead and put it in the oven and bake it. But I would like to get all the way around the door if I can. And I'm going to push them down just a little bit because I don't want them quite that sticking out quite that far. Now you could do this any way you wanted to. If you want to have yours be all one color, you know, you you can do this the way you want to. This is when you make yours, it's your project. And this one I'm just kind of making up as I go because I couldn't find a picture that I wanted to be, in, that I was very inspired by this time. Um, most of the little cottage um, cookie jars were Christmassy, and that's not what I want. very large windows. So I'm going to go ahead and go with a nice row of stones across there. Now I, I didn't make my stones all the same size. I made them just different sizes so that I can fit them in where I need them. this for 
10 minutes and then I will come back and we'll add a few more stones to it. I won't make you watch me put the stones on the whole thing. Just I'm just going to have you watch me until I get started. So let's go bake this so that my stones don't move and then I'll be back. All right, this is baked and cooled, so we're going to add some more stones around the windows. I'm going to start with between the windows and a and then above them. And like I said, I'm not going to make you sit through me doing all of these, but I want to get a few done. And try to make them, try and get them kind of random, as random as you can. It's hard. Let's go across here. And I do find I have much better luck when I use my pointy tool to apply these than when I was trying to do anything else. Although I do keep sticking my fingers into them because this is not a good spot to put them. And I am just using my finger to just flatten them out just a little bit as I place them. Because I don't want, like I, I think I said earlier, I don't want them really big. Now we're going to need a little tiny one right there. All right, let's fill in this area over here. And around the windows will look a little more uniform than any, and around the door will be more uniform than the rest of the structure. I'm going to go ahead and fill in this side. And like I said, the, we aren't even going to see the, um, the fact that the clay was not even on that first coat. It's a little too much dark brown right there. Let's pull that guy off. Let's get our dark gray. Let's get a dark brown down there. So I'm going to fill in this part on camera and then I'm going to turn the camera off and I'm going to finish doing the front. And after I get the front done, I'm going to bake. And then I'll do each side and I'll bake in between after each side I will bake also. I will try to remember to take photos as I get to the different steps and those will be on the blog post. All right, so I'm going to turn the camera off. I'm going to continue with this. I'll fill in this side, get it baked. And when I'm all the way around the house, I will come back and we will start working on the roof. All right, now we're going to start working on the roof, which is also the lid to our cookie jar. So I have some yellow ochre clay, and this I've conditioned it as best I can. It's a really old batch of yellow ochre, and it's very crumbly. I've been playing with it for a while, and I also added a little bit of TLS to kind of loosen it up a bit. Now, this is just the first step on our roof. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, this is that piece we made in the first step. I'm going to take a little TLS and I'm going to put on one side of that. I don't really need that much, but that's okay. And then I'm going to lay this right here and I'm going to push it down. Now I'm going to take my cookie jar that I've got so far and I'm going to fit it and I'm going to cut away so that this 
follows the contours of my cookie jar at least a little bit. I don't want it to stick out a lot, but this is just the first layer. Now, if you wanted to, you could optionally choose to, and be sure and remove this, you could choose to add a chimney. I'm not going to on this one, but you definitely could, and that would happen in the next step. But if you were going to do that at this point, you would cut yourself a little rectangle to build your chimney onto. Now, that off. So now I'm going to move this into the oven. I'm going to bake this for 10 minutes to get this piece nice and firm and get that TLS cured. And when that's done, then we can come back and we can start building a roof. So I'll be right back. All right, this is baked and cooled. I am going to attempt to cut off that little bit there, make that a little bit more even. Now I am going to put this on because I'm going to form the roof shape in place and then take it off to bake it. So. Bear with me, I haven't figured out exactly how I want to shape the roof. I've got a basic idea. I did some looking at some different roofs that were kind of what I want. It would help also if my clay was a little softer. Let's just take it off and get it to kind of work down. I want to kind of wrap it around that edge. Now the, the TLS is going to make it kind of slippery, but that's okay. And like I said earlier, if you want to add a chimney, you can. I decided not to on this one. Um, let me get this down so it's kind of covering the edge of that. working on trying to get the basic shape and trimming off any extra clay as it comes over the edges. I'm kind of doing kind of a thatch type roof I guess. It's going to be a very simple roof. Make sure that fits. Now what I want to do is first get rid of that little piece of white clay that I picked up off of my tray. Actually, I a wire brush. And you can add any kind of roof to this that you want. This is just one idea that I 
wanted to try. I mean, it's supposed to be fantasy, so. I'm just going to continue to work up until I get to the peak, which I am here in the front. Now lots of texture. So now I'm going to take this off of my cookie jar. I'm going to move this to my baking surface and I'm going to bake this. And I'm going to bake this for probably close to 15 minutes because this is rather thick in the center of the roof. I want to make sure it is completely cured before I take it out. So I'm going to go bake this off and then when that's baked and cold we can finish off our cookie jar. Alright this is baked and cooled. So what I've done here is I've got just like literally a drop of my woodsy smoke paint and about an equal amount of water. And I'm going to paint over this pretty quickly. And then I want to take off what's on the surface. That will only leave it down in the cracks. And now this needs to dry. And when that's dry, we'll coat this all with Mod Podge and take a look at how it looks finished. All right, I've given that roof a little time to dry. And now we are going to paint our house. I have a little piece of clay there. I want to make sure I don't have any little pieces of loose clay. Now I am a little upset. I should have used I think a lighter color blue for my windows, but hopefully they'll be all right. And we just want a very thin coat of gloss Mod Podge on the whole outside surface. If you want to, you could use a little gold dot on your door as a doorknob. I will probably do that off camera just so that I, because I just thought of that. There's that. And I'm not going to do the bottom side of the lid. I'm just going to do the top side this time. So we're going to let this dry, and as soon as the Mod Podge is dry, I'll come back and we will take a look at how our finished cookie jar looks. So I'll be right back. So our Mod Podge is dry, and we have another cookie jar. I think this turned out really cute, and I, I am envisioning a collection of cookie jars in the dollhouse. So we'll see how that turns out this in the next couple of months. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, hit the like button, leave me a comment. If you enjoy my content and haven't subscribed, consider hitting that subscription button and the notification bell so you know when I put out a new video. Be sure and check the blog post for photos, and I will talk to you next time. Bye.